Okay, we have been working on a translation projects for many years. Um, during these years, um, you know, we've come across quite a few challenges. I think today I would like to really expand a little more um, in the challenges specifically related to the source text. So as account managers, we receive um, pieces of documents that need to be translated and uh, that is obviously the source text and then over it comes to you. Yeah, like it's, it's a really hot topic for us at the minute. Uh, you know, the translators are working with the source content. So the quality of that source can have uh, sometimes an unexpected impact on the translation. So uh, if the source is missing any kind of grammar, spelling's not quite right, um, maybe the wrong product name is in there, it's going to filter through into the translation. Uh, and these things can cause issues. So it is really, really worth just making sure that, you know, all your full stops and your question marks, your exclamation marks are all in there. And so that the translator can pick up and put those in the translation as well. Um, how can we ensure that these problems are picked up? So, you know, just before they are actually translated, how can we ensure that the source content is right before it goes translated? Yeah, it's, it's actually really difficult in, in our side of things to, to do that because uh, often we receive the source content on the word of the client, you know, that, that this content is ready to go. Uh, we would always recommend proofreading your source before it comes to us. Um, you know, if something's obvious, then a project manager or a translator will flag that and say, hey, you know, we're having some difficulties translating this, could you have another look? Um, or if you're not sure, uh, you know, we do actually quite often have clients who come and say, hey, we're not really sure on the quality of this and, and how well it will translate. Uh, there's loads of services. You can have your source reviewed. Uh, there's uh, in-language uh, research available out there to help you as well. And uh, there's services such as transcreation and copywriting that can um, we'll touch on later. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, um, talking of that, um, we, you know, we work in a very international environment. That's our day to day. So how do we ensure the translation is not only translated, but also localized and resonates well with the local audience? Yes. Yeah, so again, this is another huge, huge kind of thing that we face every single day in the industry. And unfortunately, again, this can come back down to the source. So the translator there is relaying the messages and the facts of the source into the target language. So uh, quite often we're finding that the source content is written for either a very global market or a very Western market. So when you're then trying to translate that into Arabic or Chinese or, or Russian, it doesn't sound very culturally appropriate and it, that's not necessarily down to the translator but what is in the source they're relaying those facts and those uh, messages in the best way that they can so you know if you're having a source content that needs to be culturally appropriate we would recommend that you either edit your source um, or that you request a, a more creative service such as transcreation or copywriting um, or even that you have an in-country editor have a look at that copy afterwards and just make those tweaks so you talked a little bit about transcreation. So what are the main difference between just a straightforward translation and a transcreation? Mm. So transcreation came in as a kind of um, industry hybrid uh, before actually going on to a copywriting stage. Uh, so a transcreation literally is just giving a translator more creative freedom to make those tweaks, but it does need to be guided. So as a client, if you know you've got a source copy that needs to be more culturally relevant for your target market, you would give us a brief and some guidance about what it is that you want changing. So it could be the currency or the date format, it could be something broader, such as you're referring to local landmarks and actually you want to make it a Japanese local landmark uh, and then they can make those changes accordingly. They're not going to make huge changes, they're not going to rewrite their content but those cultural things can make all the difference about making your content resonate with the market. So you know the issues uh, that we've just spoken about, are they relevant to the translation process and how is the content um, actually processed by the, the translators? Yeah, it can be a little bit. So, you know, the, the fact of the matter is we use industry standard tools. They're called CAT tools, computer assisted translation. Uh, and although they, they add a lot of benefits because you have the translation memories and, and the term bases for glossary terms, and they're great, but they break down the content segment by segment. So if it's not obvious that that grammar is missing, it might not be flagged. 
Whereas if something sounds awkward, then the translator might ask that question and give you the opportunity to, to advise. Um, you know, we don't work in the actual uh, source documents that we receive because it would be too expensive and you also lose consistency and access to adding things like I glossary see. terms. So when uh, I receive a piece of, let's say, a few pages document, the translator may not see the whole document at once, but will have to be fed through the tool and yeah, they will see exactly. just a little segment. Yeah. So I they'll see. see it as a reference material and that's really great for that visual context, but uh, it can be very, very difficult to spot that, you know, a full stop's missing or, or, or even worse, that a brand term is, is incorrectly used because it might not be easy to spot unless you're actually working in that business. So in order to make this the ultimate product, the ultimate translation as perfect as we can. What can we do? What can our clients do um, in order to, to provide the best possible tools for the translator to do the best possible job? So other than what we've already touched on about making sure your source is, is correct, uh, one of the things we're quite often missing is context. So quite often we might receive a couple of strings for translation, but the wider context about what that means is missing. And sometimes we receive just a list of terms. And again, the translator can look at that and they have to make their best judgment sometimes. So if you have any visual context or you know just wider paragraph or a related white paper or something like that, that gives a bit more information, that's always really perfect. We send that on for reference. Very good, thank you. That's always good to keep in mind. <laughs>